What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nighttime Chat with Ro. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong <laughs> on my uh, Instagram, and so I'm not live. What's popping, everybody? Welcome to the conversation. I'm pulling it together. I had to uh, go pick up some beads and stuff for my hair. I'm getting ready to attempt to get cuter tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So how you be? Welcome, y'all. Hey, I just got Instagram in the mix. What's popping? I um, apologize for my tardy. I had to go pick up some uh, hair jewelry. I'm going to, I'm getting ready to do my chameleon thing and, and change it up and see what's, what's going on. <laughs> How's everybody feeling tonight? How are you? Welcome to the conversation. You know what? I, I might regret that I did not get my grown woman eyes before I started this conversation. Y'all know I like to have my glasses and I don't have them. What's popping? See, look, I'm already like, if, if I mispronounce anybody's name tonight, you got to forgive your girl because... <laughs> I didn't bring my glasses, okay? So I'm a, I'm gonna put on my extra like spidey eyes for this. Coach Roni, how are you? Welcome to the conversation, darling. Bacon is good. Bless, bless. Come on, bacon bits. Welcome. You know I have uh, pivoted, and uh, the school is shifting. So that's exciting. Uh, anybody who's been through my program prior to this moment, you are, you know, a special, special. You had a special experience because now it is a cherished relic. Okay. Uh, I have pivoted and it's something new. Um, so I just dropped in because I want to say hi. I always want to like, just stay connected. If you need me, let's say you're challenged with something right now in the moment. If you would like some stretched perspective or you want some assistance in, you know, giving something new meaning, uh, I'm here. I'm available for that. But I got a question for you. And I want you to, uh, what's up, Patrick? I see you. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the conversation. What's popping? Thank you so much for the compliment. Okay, so let me uh, then let me say hi to my people in Facebook land and YouTube. Landis, welcome, darling. <sighs> what's popping, Annette? Come on in, darling. Okay, I got a question for you. I want you to answer it. I want everybody to answer it. If you could spend a day with any person, living or dead, living or passed on, who would it be and why? A day. Hey, it's Don Bond. Hey, darling. You say, hope I'm doing well. Bless up, bless up, bless up. Happy Winning Wednesday. I like that. Winning Wednesday evening. I like that. Shout out to There Is Light, y'all. I, I I tried to step my game up. I got a little something for uh, YouTube and Facebook because I know it was I was struggling. Okay, <laughs> I was struggling with the light situation. Instagram always got me looking uh, cuter than than I, I might be looking in person. Okay, it, I just love my cosmic feels for this. You feel me? Hey, I love the Lord. Thank you, darling. I'm getting ready to change it. The next time y'all see me, I'm about to be on something else. You know, your girl is a chameleon. OK, Charles, welcome to the conversation. So I'm looking for these answers. If you could spend one day with any person of your choosing, living or passed on, who would it be and why? I'm very interested to get your answers. I know that there are some unique answers that are going to come out and I want to see what you say. If you could spend the day with any one person of your choosing, past or present, who would you choose and why? Ah, Ilala says my future self. Why, Ilala? <laughs> Tell the people why you would choose your future self to spend the day with. I like that answer. Simply the best says the creator. I have so many questions. Hey, I mean, if, if I may, simply the best, you can spend the day with the creator right now. Hello. But I mean, when you say that, do you anticipate that it's going to be some kind of different mystical experience? And if so, what do you think it would be like? Like, how do you imagine the creator to be? What is it a physical form? Is it a um, is it is it energy? Is it a color? 
Is it textured? Like, how do you imagine what the creator is? And then that'll give even more context to what you mean by spending a day with the creator. Um, Marvin says the thing that is popping is um, if you want to, what is that? Want to sure. And that's not my glasses. This is what Marvin said. Marvin, what did you write? <laughs> Know the real wordsmith. Grooming Lounge is here. Okay, welcome, darling. Uh, Charles says, my Aunt Essie, she passed a few years ago. All of the family history mm, passed with her. Mm, she kept us in the loop. Oh, wow. With a very large family tree. So, Charles, what are you guys going to do to um, kind of get that history back or at least try to get it back? try to find it, trying to try to excavate it, if that's the word, you know what I mean? Like, um, what are you going to do with that? That's so important, isn't it? Like, to make sure that we stay in the family stories. I know we're so used to um, this, this fast paced life and, 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 um, you know, dealing with digital life. And so we may even forget to tap into our elders and record what they say. Literally sometimes write down, but literally record what they say. Like sit down with your grandmother or your great aunt or whoever is the elder in your family and record them speaking about their past and what they know of your family so that we can keep this stuff, this history, you know, is so powerful. And you, I think, could be surprised by how the history comes out of their expression. I think we don't value elders as much as we used to on a, on a majority basis. And a lot of our history is getting lost like that. That's good. Um, Landis says the question is a little more difficult than I thought to answer, isn't it, huh? Like it took me a second to kind of ruminate with some people in my mind. I was like, well, who would I want to spend a day with? And for what reason? Like why? You know, that's that's kind of deep. Um, hey, Norris, welcome to the conversation. Good to see your name here. Annette says, Jesus, I need answers for his from his perspective. You better say it. You better say that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, Marvin says, my dad, because I got a lot of feedback from everyone saying that I look exactly like him. Mm. You know, I was torn uh, with my dad as well, Marvin. I was like, well, that was the first person that came out of my mouth. I was like, I would love for my father to or me, me and my father to sit down and have a conversation from this matured perspective in me. Like who I am today is not who he was when he passed. I am of course who I am, but I've grown so much. I've explored different aspects of myself and life. I've shifted in some of the ways that I communicate myself and how I think about life and what I think is possible and blah, blah, blah. blah. And then I think that because he was my dad, um, I didn't approach conversation with him the way that I would with a friend. You know, there was always that kind of respect factor and it's my dad. And, you know, like, how do you get into the deeper crevices of <laughs> who he is or his life and what he experienced? And so I would love to have a, a, a conversation with my father today. I think it would be eye opening and surprising. Because I think we will both discover things about each other that, that we didn't anticipate we would discover. Yeah. Uh, Ray Fail, welcome. He says, hey, coach. Hola, coach. Okay, glad to see you again. Good to see you too. Uh, would love to spend one day with my mom because she was the best mom for me and I felt safe and loved. That's beautiful. Mm. Bless up. Nora says, it feels good to be here. Good. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Charles says, been trying to figure out. My aunt was one of my 20, whoa, was one of 21 siblings. <laughs> There's 15 of them remaining. My grandfather is one of 11. You have a huge family. Oh my goodness. That's why I made it my business to attend family reunions unions on my father's side. You make it your business. Bless up. I want to, I, I prioritizing a family reunions as well. Uh, I missed this year on my dad's side. Go figure. Um, I was so tired. I didn't even want to get back in another plane for a second. So I had to honor that. But um, that is something that is absolutely a priority for me too. 
I want to make sure that I get to family reunions. I want to pour into the space that way. I want to nurture those relationships. And then I just want to tap into human beings, their stories from them, not always in the digital space, but just go have like this human, beautiful, organic interaction, right? Okay. I'm missing all the goodies on um, Instagram. Let me see what's popping. Hey, y'all, welcome to the conversation. Welcome. Um, okay, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I would ask your dad to marry you all over. Thank you, honey. My husband put something in here I wasn't expecting to read. Hey, Arabian Hope, welcome, darling. Uh, it's Don Bond says, off topic, but I just want to say thank you for these live streams. Your work is not in vain. Bless up. Thank you for saying that. That's beautiful feedback. Thank you. Uh, Coach Roney says, President Lincoln, I would love to know more about his leadership, the how. Bless up. What do you find fascinating about President Lincoln out of all the other leaders? Because there's been plenty, right? Is there one thing in particular that like really pops out about his character or integrity or just who he was? I would love to hear that. JC Songbird says, Aaliyah would be mine. Bless. What would you want to ask, if anything, or what would you want to explore if you care to share about Aaliyah? Arabian Hope says, good morning. Welcome to the 5 a.m. club, darling. Is it 5 a.m. where you are or 519? <laughs> oh, I just realized I had my phone on um, do not disturb. That's probably for a good reason. It's 5 a.m. Bless up. Mike's. Hey, Mike. Uh, it's 520. Bless. OK. All right. MMC in the building. Okay, let's see what y'all are saying on Facebook and YouTube. Nora says, I have two sisters who are living on my father's side. You will want to speak to both of them. For what reason, Nora? It's just curious. Why would you want to speak to them? Where's the treasure, if you will, in that? Uh, JC says, I love their style of music and uh, the love, love she gave. Aaliyah was my favorite. Bless up. She was a sweet spirit. She came across that way. Um, we had a unique like uh, crossing of paths at the time. Um, my, I, We both had the same hair and makeup team. And I remember um, that, you know, when I, when I heard the news, I was like, oh, and I started calling everybody like, you know, are they still there? Are they still there? And um one of them uh, didn't get on the plane and the other one did. And that was a very interesting time, as we all know. Um, let's see. Muhammad Ali, because he sounded like a good person inside and outside of the ring. Yeah, that would be an interesting conversation. It wouldn't. It would be a very interesting conversation to talk to Muhammad Ali. I, I think people that um, especially at that day and time who traversed the world when it was not common, uh, when we weren't as connected as we are digitally. Um, I, I can only imagine the way that they took in the landscapes that they saw. Right. And um, the conversations that they had and how they were so much more unique because they weren't influenced by like group think. Right. What's popular to say uh, mob mentality where everybody's on the same frequency unless you dare to think outside of it. I think people were a lot. A lot of people were more unique at that time. And the conversations probably were so much more um, interesting to listen to because the same words weren't being used. The same thought processes, you know, weren't being accessed because we came from different layers of experience. And because we didn't have overexposure to those experiences, it could have been even more magical to discover the way that they thought, the way that they saw life and the way that they approached it, you know. Uh, you only met one of them. Okay, Norris, I see. Charles says, I'm the oldest of my dad's children, six children. Gosh, you guys have so many people in your family. We all have other siblings. So we make sure we stay connected. That way we won't and don't have cousins fighting or dating each other. Hello, because y'all got a lot of folks in the building. You feel me? <laughs> Angels, what's up? I'd like to speak with Terry Ellis. Okay. I was trying to make it in music at some time uh, and at some time in Vogue debut. I'm not sure what you mean by that. It's unfortunate what happened to the group and my own fate. Really? Mm, what, what happened to your fate? What happened to your fate do you feel? And why do you feel it's over? 
Why do you feel it's over? Mm, very interested to hear your answer. Let's see what y'all are going to say. Okay. Um, Muhammad Ali, because he's, okay, got that. It's Don Bond. I would love to spend the day with Martin Luther King as he prepared for his, ooh, I have a dream speech in Washington, D.C. How did he prepare? What was his thought process? Interesting. Interesting. Nice. Uh, uh, Calvin says uh, the new single, Bars Are Dope by brother Calvin D. Tucker Jr. Out all, pl okay, plus up Calvin. Congratulations on your release. Congratulations on your release. He wants you to go and check out his music. Arabian Hope says, Bob Marley and Muhammad Ali were amazing. Their words were amazing. Yes, yes. Um, deep in some instances, in a lot of instances, profound thinkers, bold daring, courageous. Yeah, man. Big time. Big time. Chocolate Hustle says um, Hiram Revels, the first African-American senator. Ooh, for what reason? I want to know the why. Why, Chocolate? Mike says, I would want to talk to my great grandmother and tell her thanks for always being the loving person that she was because I have those exact qualities from her. How beautiful is that? That's beautiful. Planting seeds. Love it. Uh, I got food stamps. That background. <laughs> Thank you. I love it too. It's my cosmic world. Welcome, darling. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Um, Angel says incarceration. Oh, founded upon false charges. I'm sorry about that. I take it, angels, that you're out now and Possibly you may have mentioned this under different circumstances in another chat, but I would love to know, especially now, what is your takeaway? What's your profound takeaway, if any? What's the way that you grew, if any? Um, yeah, what is the growth that you got from that experience? Even though it's it came from what you are saying is a negative, judging as a negative, what is the good, if any, that you've pulled from the fact that you were incarcerated and that that changed your fate? We'd love to hear your answer on that. Mm, let's see. Uh, Arabian Hope, my favorite idol is Michael Jackson. Wish he was alive. Would love to spend a day talking to him. Can you imagine? Michael, Michael, ooh. Like before this level of access to people, right? He was one of the biggest stars on the planet. I mean, people lost their minds. They passed out. They were like the mob, you know what I mean? Back in the day when people went crazy over stars, he came from such a unique space and time when it comes to uh, artistry in that space and on that level. I think he would be fascinating to speak with. The people he encountered, the conversations he had that we none of us know anything about uh, before social media was even a thought, a glimmer, at least in the average person's mind, right? NASA and everybody else might have known about it, but we didn't. So I just wonder, yeah, people like that who, who experienced and explored the world on that level, before this level of access, what what was their thought process, and what would what measure of wisdom would he have to uh, impart to us? Man, powerful. Um, let's see. If I could talk to anyone, it would be my grandmother, who I wish was still alive. Why, Norris? Why? What is it about your grandmother that you feel would be um, pretty special or profound in particular to speak to her? Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and playing along. I think um, it's kind of cool to hear, you know, hey, Kayla, what's up, girl? <laughs> How people think and what they uh, deem important or um, could be like a, a, a something that moves the needle of progress in their lives because they take that meeting. There was this... Um, this challenge out recently that my husband was telling me about, he was saying, would you take $500,000 or a sit down or lunch or something with Jay-Z, right? And so I was like, oh, okay. I want to expand that and say, who would you sit with for the day, past or, past or present? 
you know, and why would you do that? And, and I would figure that some people would sit down with Jay-Z because they feel that he has some measure of wisdom or like money tips or something, you know, and maybe they would think that that would be more valuable than just getting the money. Maybe he could teach you how to fish instead of giving you the fish, right? So it's an interesting question, I think. Um, Angel says, sent an invitation to ask Rona requesting guest speaker at shout out video for Soul Liberation Day, December 7th, uh, 2023. Okay. I've learned much from both incarceration and cancer diagnosis. Okay. Any one thing you want to, you want to point out angels? Uh, many don't like new outlook. Shouts out to your husband. I also drive trucks. Bless up. Shout out to the transportation, the lifeblood of the country, baby. What's popping? Um, Smooth Batman, welcome, darling. Always good to see your name in the spot. Uh, hi, love bug. Just stopping by to say hi. I am at work. Bless up. I'm glad you did. I'm missing people's stuff. I'm slow. Good evening. Frat Blue Fight. Say Blue Fight. Michael says, I love Michael Jackson too. He is the reason that I sing. Bless up. Um, whoop de whoop tick. <laughs> Haven't been on both sides of accessibility via social media during your career. So you uh, missed the before, a star. I would love to have seen and used social media as we know it today. Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Yeah, Lisa. You know, um, I uh, interviewed Dr. Sabi years ago. And he talked about his um, relationship with Lisa Left Eye Lopez. And he was saying that Lisa was such a special, powerful person. And she used to, or at least at this particular time, she had gone to his healing village in Honduras. And, um, you know, she had decided to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. I think she was, uh, he said, CMOS for 40 days and 40 nights. And one of those nights she came into his hut or wherever he was. And, and she told him, she told the healer that he needed healing. And he was like, whoa. She was able to intuitively tell him, you need healing. And he just was like, Lisa was so special. They had this uh, wonderful connection. And I thought his story is on uh, YouTube. If you ever get a chance, um, it's when I used to do my web radio show at America Talk Live. And if you type in um, uh, Dr. Sebi, I think, and Lisa Left Eye Lopez, it'll probably populate. And it was a really interesting conversation. And she just sounded like a really special person. So shout out to that. Um, Annette says, Cleopatra, she was a strong, powerful, cunning woman. Okay. I'd like to get a sense of her personality and learn from her experiences. Interesting, right? Some of the uh, women that have been powerful over time, especially in patriarchal societies or, or spaces where men seem to dominate, but there were times in past, if history proves correct, that there were, that were very dominant women. The divine feminine was in the, in the forefront. Yes, finding out from women that were in power back in those times is probably prolific. Would probably be prolific. Uh, Charles says, I would like to talk to Marvin Spencer. I'm not, uh, he passed some years ago. He's the father of Tracy Spencer. I would have had him develop me like he did his daughter. She went on to Star Search, won and signed with Capitol Records, released three albums. I would like to see if I would have followed a similar path. Interesting. Very interesting. Ray Phil says, also Whitney Houston, after my own heart, because she uh, inspired me and so many others through her music. I also want to know about her vocal training. Bless up. Sound like it was a anointing, that vocal training. OK, <laughs> um, my experience showed me my inner strength and my own ability to use my brain to guide me to what's best. Reading books is good. But for me, it diminished our own uniqueness. Interesting. Mm, thank you for that. Angels, his takeaway, the takeaway from being incarcerated. Um, Esther, hey, uh, my mommy. Oh. God bless your mommy. Uh, first for her gumbo recipe. Hello. <laughs> then to, add, to talk about her health history and things I need to know about my health issues. Mm. 
insightful. Yeah. Yeah. Kayla says, I'd sit down with Beyonce because I feel like watching her makes, uh, make deals would be like a masterclass speak. I'd say the same for Tyler Perry and Oprah. They are inspirations for me. Bless up what Tyler Perry, all of them, honestly, what all of them have done in their, you know, respectively has been historic, powerful, game changing, all the things, right? Uh, thank you, truckers. Bless up. I know I'm behind. Shucks. Uh, do you miss rather us? I'm sorry. I missed uh, what you were saying. Whoop dee. Mm. Whoop dee. Whoop. That's incredible. I will check it out now. Yes. The Lisa Left Eye Lopez. I'm late. I'm not sure if this was said already. I would love to sit and talk with Jesus. Yes, it was, Lisa. Uh, and we were asking, I was asking why, uh, you know, for everybody to qualify who they choose. Why would you want to sit down with them? Is there something in particular that sticks out to you or that you would love to get from the conversation or the, the quality time spent? Cool, man. I'm loving these answers. Thank you for playing along today. Um, you know, if you want to ask me anything before I get out of here, if you need some advice or you need some stretch perspective about something or, you know, uh, if something's got you in a challenged space and you would love some insight um, coming from someone other than yourself, um, I'm available for that before I get out of here. Charles said, I, I had everyone back then telling me I was a good singer and should be recording. There were two acts I was compared to back then. The boys, <laughs> I used to love the boys. <laughs> My friends, we were so silly. We would stand in front of the uh, TV and, and whenever we see a little something, something, we would go crazy. Oh, we were so, <laughs> we were so crazy. That brought back a core memory. Um, <laughs> the boys and Tevin Campbell. Tevin was a beast, honey. Ugh, what? Tracy Spencer and I went to the same school uh, when she was there and not promoting her records. Tevin Campbell was cool. I want to say Tevin came, went to, did he come to the Mouse Club when we were younger? We got a chance to meet some really cool people back then, and he was really cool. He was, he, he just really, my God sister was visiting at the time and they just went, okay. Uh, Angel says, what's ironic. It took a lot of reading and writing being a self-made lawyer. Hmm? You show a digital shoulder brush for that to beat incarceration. I mean, books and beliefs and philosophy. So isn't that interesting? You say that it can get in the way of uniqueness, but it also uh, stretched you in a way that it provided um, greater value and possibility for your life. Ho, 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 ho. Hello. Um, let's see. Lisa says, I feel so inspired by him without having met. Can't imagine how the level of inspiration will rise after getting to speak with him. Bless up. Okay. Jesus. Okay. Uh, yes, Tevin was on MMC. Yeah, I know. So many um, memories. Kayla says, when uh, pursuing your dreams, how do you cut out the noise from loved ones? What worked best for you, for me? Hmm. Um, you know what? I didn't really, <laughs> I got, I will say I felt, especially hindsight, you know, I didn't feel this way when I was younger, but looking back, I feel like I was a bit lucky that I knew what I wanted very early on in my life. And so I kind of had tunnel vision. Um, I went after my dreams very early. I was like talking to the walls in my parents' basement at seven or eight years old. I could see through the wood panels into uh, an audience of faces and people who were excited about whatever I was doing in the moment, whether it was disciplining my imaginary children or putting on the Ritz for whatever reason. I just lived in my imagination quite frequently. Um, I had a serious conversation with my mom when we were riding down the street in Chicago and she was like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I was like, I want to be a singer like Whitney Houston. My mother thought it was cute. I had already been singing in church or whatever, but she's like, well, that's nice, you know, but what's your plan B? OK, because my mom's big on education and I'm looking at her like I don't have a plan B. That's what I want to do. So I think because of my tunnel vision 
And I was an insecure kid. You know, I didn't have it going on like that. I was very skinny. I was, you know, sit on somebody's lap. They think my booty's bony and they got to pick me up. I mean, I did not have all the things, but I had enough belief in myself and not enough doubt to tell me that I couldn't have it because that's a huge, huge thing. And so I went after it. I believed I could have it. I believed I could do it. Even though I had some moments of defeat along the way, I think I was young enough. And then I had the support of my parents because they saw how serious I was too. I was like, mom, what can you do for me? <laughs> like, seriously. So I think tunnel vision is big. Um, allowing yourself to believe is huge. Um, knowing that you know, some people, the only reason they might discourage you because they didn't have the courage to go after their own stuff or they just don't know how you're going to pull it off. And so their fears, their doubts are kind of bleeding onto your situation. You don't have to um, take that on. Um, I always tell people, if you can find the good out of something that someone says or something that you read, you know, sometimes you get the hate or comments or whatever, and you might stumble across it or you may allow yourself to indulge in it. But if you do, Pick out what's good, find the good, throw out the rest. Same thing I would say with any dream you're pursuing. Pick out the good, find the good in it, because sometimes even in the hate, if you will, it can show you some place where you might have a, a weak spot, right? Or something you could stand to tighten up. You'd be like, well, I actually could tighten up right there. Sometimes the haters can help you elevate <laughs> if you look at it like that. If you look at the, for finding the good and throwing out the rest, it can be incredible. Um, direction for you. But yeah, I would say tunnel vision, believing in yourself, um, knowing that everybody is here trying to figure it out and doing the best they can with the light that they have. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you got to trailblaze. Sometimes you got to be that one and you can do that and surround yourself with other champions and just other people in general, people who are going after their dreams, people who are giving themselves the opportunity to beat the odds, get in those circles more often than not so that you can stay going after the thing, so that you can keep gleaning inspiration from them going after the thing, you know? Tony, what's popping? It's good to see you too. It's good to see your name, LaShonda. Hey. <clears throat> Wouldn't we all appreciate the time Rona gives us already? Bless up, LaShonda. So good to see you, Bryce. Hey, Tevin is so self full. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Not sure. Um, my family name is also Bennett. Oh, welcome to the Bennett clan. Bennett and Johnson are some of your family from Mississippi who migrated to Chicago and Midwest in general. No, from Alabama mostly. We're from, we're Alabamians. Bama. Okay, Stephanie, hey girl, what's popping? Um, skinny girls always grow up to be so fine. <laughs> Thank you. Boy, I tell you, I was waiting on it. My friend was like, you're going to be glad that you were skinny when you were younger because it's going to count more later. But at the time when you're going through puberty, it's like the worst. Oh my God. I was like, <sighs> but now, yeah, I'm totally grateful. <laughs> like now my slim is is something I can appreciate. But coming from Chicago, where voluptuous was queen, okay, where people celebrated the curves and all of that, I was not having the greatest self-esteem in that area. And when I moved to Cali, um, it was so interesting because, you know, I remember I was on this movie set and these girls, it was, it was uh, some, some, Caucasian sisters, okay? And they came up to me and they were like, girl, my God, your body. You know, and they were doting on my, my slender frame and I did not know how to receive the compliments. I'm thinking, what? Like, I didn't even, my, my, <laughs> my body image was so warped in the sense of, you know, I always felt like I lacked something, right? Um, I don't have the curves. I don't have the booty that they, you know, would dote over from where I'm from. So when they were doting over my slender frame, I did not know how to receive it. And they thought I was being kind of conceited or either standoffish or something. I just didn't know how to accept the compliment. And it took me a second. I did a lot of mirror work, you know, standing in front of the, front of the mirror, uh, speaking into my 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 confidence, myself, my body, uh, speaking the things that I wanted to see on my body because, um, and especially since I had come from the Mouse Club, being a Mouseketeer, you know, we were able to wear. Uh, how many of y'all remember cross colors? 
all the baggy clothes, like when Criss Cross was popping, I would wear Oshkosh Bagash, you know, everything I could wear, <laughs> clothes that, that were kind of baggy and, and masked my frame, you know, but as time went on and I had to go up for like roles that, that, you know, women were going up for when I was 18, I moved to Cali and I went to where the big dogs play is where I, what I like to say. So I started going on big dog auditions and, you know, I had, I remember I had to go in there one time. I, uh, um, my management at the time was like, yeah, put on this mini skirt and this top. I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I was like, I had no clue how to hold down the outfit. I, I just had not come into that aspect of my femininity yet. And it took me a second to evolve into the space that I am now. I mean, it's been years now, but it took me a second to come into that level of femininity in myself because of the, you know, the insecurities that I had. So, yeah, man, uh, let's see. I got my job, girl. Ooh, yay. Good for you, Stephanie. That's what's up. Good for you. High five, digital high five, man. Um, let's see. I went to Vegas recently and manifested Usher's producer coming through with my concert tickets charge. He promised me for my B-Day, uh, had haters on the trip. My bestie and I believed, and guess what? We got in touch with him before the concert and went to the concert last Sunday. That's what's up. I heard his concert's really good too. Happy belated birthday. I think I, I wished you a happy birthday, but happy birthday here too. Yeah, man. Bryce Scott says my better half's birthday is November 9th. He'll be 25, forgive me, 26. Y'all know I don't have my grown woman eyes on. And if you could feed into his life and future, he's two years from wrapping up his military run. Um, <laughs> bless up. Happy birthday to your better half. Happy birthday. All the best with the next bold steps you're taking in your life. Um. Just some words of wisdom. Is there anything in particular, Bryce, that you feel uh, he is stepping into that challenges his self-esteem or challenges his belief in himself or challenges what he thinks is possible or what he's capable of? Um, let's see. His name is Avion. Hey, Avion. OK. <laughs> Stephanie says, I struggle with my body since I had my son eight years ago. Yeah, man. I think it's so important. For us to do mirror work with ourselves. If you're having issues with your body, uh, your, what you say to yourself makes a difference. What you continuously say to yourself can, um, can truly shape uh, how you see yourself. It can give you body dysmorphia sometimes. You may be more beautiful than you think. You may be more normal than you think, but if you don't speak to yourself a certain way and you don't choose to see yourself a certain way and you don't feed into that space, it can it can shift how you how you respond to life, how you show up in life, what you allow yourself to believe about yourself, what you allow yourself to have, what you give yourself permission to do, to be who to be with. This stuff is huge. It is so important that we get our our, our champion dialogue on deck. And not only that, um do your best with presenting yourself a certain way. Like if you know you're not doing what you can to present the best version of yourself, do better, do more. You get to choose. We get to choose, right? Let's see. I know I've been missing people's uh, conversations. Let me see when, uh, okay, 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 okay. What you saying on Instagram? I'm about to get out of here. <laughs> Uh, Arabian Hope, who do you think is better on tour this year, Janet Jackson or Madonna? I think they're two different artists with uh, different appeals. Um, I mean, I did I go see? Look, I feel like I went to see Janet because I saw her on <laughs> YouTube. Somebody who filmed it and I thought her concert was great. I haven't seen Madonna stuff in years. Years. Please share your workouts. You know what? I probably need to start doing that, right? Showing y'all what I do to do, you know, maintain and keep my body structure strong. You know, every day I want to do something that um, feeds into that space, you know, keep chipping away, keep maintaining something that's sustainable, realistic, you know. Absolutely. How's it going? It's going good. Hey, girl. 
I'm 45 turning 46, November 17th. Bless up. Happy early birthday. I enjoy working out in the gym and I love dancing. Hey, you don't look your age. Bless up. Bless up. What's up, Ashley? Good to see your name in the spot. All right, I'm about to get out of here. Let me see. Um, you guys were fly on MMC style wise. Thank you. <laughs> Shonda says, I was blessed up for my birthday. Best Vegas B-Day trip. Now I'm energized to get back to my business. Good. Usher was awesome. Now I got to meet you when you come to Houston again. Yes, you do. Still on the dream list. Okay, we got to make it happen. We got to make it happen. Manifesting is everything. Congrats. You, Miss E and Cindy have some much endurance and tough, mm, tough skin. Thank you, darling. Still pushing EV strong. That's the conversation to have. Bless up. Mm. Uh, yes, you did, Rona. Thank you again. Thank you, LaShonda. Okay, I know I missed all this stuff. I'm so late. Um, blessings that you rock that job every day like a superstar. Bless up. I was uh, personal power university in Cancun. How was it? It was amazing. Will you ever invite guests here to your live stream? What do you mean by that? Do I, everybody's welcome to these live streams. I, I actually um, encourage you all to bring people in. I think we have great conversations and you never know who needs it. Um, God bless you. God bless you, Stephanie. I want him to believe that he's blessed giving uh, his upbringing who he is today. Mm. Sometimes we forget where we are is exactly where we're supposed to be. And the future is up to us. Well, you know what? That's what that's one of the things I like to say, too. We are always choosing. He is always in the power position. What's the power position? You always choosing. So there's a great quote that I think is very fitting in this moment. And it says our choices define our destiny. If your choices define your destiny. Because it's pointing you in the direction of where you're going, right? It's pointing you in the direction of the next action you're going to take or the next action you're not going to take, who you're going to align with, what thoughts and beliefs you're going to align with. Those are all choices. Even what people and things say you should do in order for you to align with those things, you got to believe it and say that, okay, then I guess I can. You still are choosing. But I like to take should out of my vocabulary because it does keep the power outside of myself. I, if I'm always choosing, my language is I will or I won't, I do or I don't. Doesn't that always keep me in the power position? And it also enables me to own what's coming out of my mouth. And so if your choices define your destiny, this is for everybody. What are you choosing for yourself and your life? Are you consciously choosing? Or are you just kind of haphazardly falling into some experiences? Mm. Hello. Okay, let's leave on the word. How about that? Um, you're very inspiring. Oh, bless up. Love hearing you. Bless up. Thank you. November 19th is the LL Cool J celebration, the hip hop. He's been going around the country with that um, um, concert. Yeah, definitely go check that out and support it. Latoya, where you been? You had you late to the party. I'm about to get out of here. Kim, hey lady, my body has changed throughout the years. MMC days, I was uh, the plump girl. Now I am the mom trying to gain weight. Get out of here. Inside though, mm, I am the same. Loving with all that I have every damn day. You better say it with your chest. I heard that. I heard that. LaShonda says, we appreciate you. I remember I used to ask you if you'd ever sing on your lives. Man, <laughs> you're singing to our souls with your positivity, vibes and words. We are blessed up by you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that word, LaShonda. Thank you for that encouragement. Hey, Renee. Hey, darling. Okay, I'm about to leave. Bar Scott says, thank you so much. We love, love, love you and appreciate everything. We needed this blast. Good. Stephanie says, you speak. On it beautifully, needed it, bless. All right, man, definitely share the video if you think somebody can uh, benefit from it. All right, y'all, this was cool. I like it. I might have to come back with some more thought-provoking questions in the future, more often. Um, <laughs> good luck, LaShonda. Okay, so she still want me to sing. Y'all know I don't do it. Come see me, though.
All right, y'all. I'm sending love out. It's good to see everybody's name in the spot. Arabian's Hope says, thank you so much for giving me the positive vibes. Even I'm late to getting married. Seeing and taking your experience and example helped me a lot. Bless up. It's never too late. You still got breath. Yo, look, I got a, a two day. I am. Hello. I'm giving away free coaching for two days on November 13th and 14th. If that is something that you're interested in, DM me the word tonight, because tonight we talked about it. Uh, this is a way for me to give um, results in advance for people to learn what I do, what I'm passionate about, uh, why I do what I do and how I can help you right where you are in this moment. There was something that you just said that sparked me to say this. Um, oh, um, even, even though I'm late getting married, it's never too late to me. If you got breath in your body, and especially if you got presence of mind, you can make some different choices, right? Our choices define our destiny. You can make some new choices right now that can change the trajectory of your life and what you experience. Don't chase success. Become more attractive to it. How? I'm talking about it on those two days and so much more. If you are interested in this, DM me the word tonight. Also, I'm so glad I'm, I'm forgetting to make announcements. We are singing... Um, my, me and my Mouseketeer family, we're going to be in Nashville on December 9th. Come on, somebody who's going to be here. Is it on the 10th? I know I'm going to get there on the 9th. I think we may be um, performing on December 10th. It's going to be in Nashville. Check out all the uh, the stuff, the information surrounding the event because your girl did not <laughs> I didn't write it down. But check it out. We're going to be there. We're singing uh, things for Christmas. We're going to uh, connect with, you know, our, our Mouse Ka Nation, uh, hug some necks. And um, who knows what kind of amazing inspiration is going to come out of that as well. So Nashville, Tennessee, December 10th, I'm going to be there with my Mouse Club family. And if you guys are looking for the next level of you, November 13th and 14th, a live virtual event for free. Hello. OK, two days retreat style learning. What could you gain from being present? Are you ready for what more you have to offer life? Are you? If you are, DM me the word tonight and I'll send you more information. OK. All right. Thanks, Rona, for always being so positive and keeping us inspired and motivated. You got it, Mike. Thanks for checking in tonight, getting ready for work. OK, have a great day at work. Arabian Hope. Peace out to my Instagram family. Love you guys. Bye. And then I'm about to peace out my folks on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Hey, y'all. OK, um, thank you for chiming in. Thank you for playing along. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and deep wisdom tonight. Um, OK, until next time. All right. Peace, y'all. You too, LaToya.